Nyan, yeah. Hey guys, it's me, Kitty here, and I hope you guys are doing wonderful and well and healthy. I know it's been a while, and I'm kind of slow on the uptake regarding speed videos and reaction videos and such. But we're doing something a little different today. Um, usually I do speed paints with just really cool epic music from um, from various artists uh, around all around our wonderful world of world of the world wide web. But this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start doing conversational pieces. So we're still going to do the usual speed paints that I have. You know, if you still guys really enjoy that, it seems like you guys do from what I can see on my channel. But besides of just doing all the time, just music and playback and get to see hours of logged in work, you get to instead, we can talk about various different things, various things throughout the otaku community, the gamer community, the cosplay, the brony community, the Pokemon community, and so much more in these various pieces. So there's going to be some that are going to be just drawing pieces with epic music. And then there's going to be other pieces where I'm going to be drawing in the background with a little bit of music and some conversation in it. Because, like, you know, I want to see you guys and get to know you guys and how you think. Um, the people that I, that really enjoy my artwork, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. The people who are, uh, really enjoy my artwork, I, I really want to hear what you guys have to say. I really want to hear what you guys are thinking. Now it's starting to grow into a community because I see that now it's gotten to 400 subscribers and I thank you guys so much for the growth in that regard. But, um, I, yeah, I really want to see what's, what's really going on in my little community my little hub that you you created together and you know i really want to hear from you guys so so for today this will be my very last christmas themed feed paint i know it's in i don't know uh, we're in february march <laughs> Since we lost so so much time already, you know, why not a few more months? <laughs> but um, yeah, this will be my very last Christmas gift speed paint video for the year until the proper time, which is like later on this year where Christmas comes rolling around again. It's just that I've been a little bit bogged down with a lot of stuff that I think might be best if I talked about it in another video. Maybe another speed video we'll talk about um, certain distractions in the artwork. But I think what I really want to talk about today, and it seems like a lot of people have been asking me about this, is inspiration. Where do my inspiration come from? So that's like the biggest, this will be the topic, my very first topic is inspiration. Where does it come from? What does inspiration mean to you? How does it work in your sphere? How do you take inspiration, where you get inspiration from, and how you apply it to your artwork? And that is actually a big question in my belief that um, artists gather inspiration very differently from each other whether it's fine arts, whether it's music, cosplay, they might have, they might be presented, which is funny, some might be presented with the same sense of inspiration. Like for instance, if they look at a muse per se, like a particular person or a particular animal or something like that, they might be intrigued by the same muse or inspired by the same muse, but you'll get like three different results depending on the artist. And I think that goes across the board, if anything. But to stay on topic, inspiration, what does it mean to me? It means a lot to me. The way I conduct my art is through emotion. So a lot of cases when, even if I dig into various points of what makes me happy or my usual sources of inspiration, which could be like, comics, high fantasy, nature, you know, uh, elements such as the scientific elements and also the old school mythology, mythological elements. Just 
or music or a memory or something like that, depending on my emotional range at that given time, it might come out differently. So like if, for instance, if I'm usually thinking of something aquatic, I, I, I took a visit to a lake or an ocean or anything like that nature because I like hanging around lakes. I like, you know, forest walks and stuff like that. If I'm really, really happy and bubbly, the artwork will come out really colorful. The co artwork will come out a little, a little bit more, you know, bright. So I'll use like my usual common colors such as like pinks and, and, and purples and blues throughout my artwork, which, you know, you guys seen me do like a billion times. But when I'm actually feeling sad, you might see a lot more monochrome. You might see a lot more ink work. It might not be as neat and uh, smooth as it was like when I'm very jovial and happy. It will come out, but it might not come out as the way I would like it to. It's it, it's tough regarding that. Or there's sometimes where because of my emotional range, wherever it is at that given time, I might not feel like doing artwork at that given moment. And it's fair, you know, so so emotions do play a part, a huge part of it. Where I get my inspiration from is hmm, where should I start? For one thing, a lot of I come from a very artistic background. My grandparents were artists um my grandmother was a master seamstress she made her own outfit she made her own clothing and made dresses for other people that were in her social circle she would make men wedding dresses i remember I remember when I was little she had this um sewing room and she had like this really big uh, sewing machine but she had like the old school sewing machine where there had to be a pedal for it so I well I actually you know what I'm not sure if nowadays sewing machines <laughs> have pedals but that's what I remembered of of her that's why I admire cosplayers and and plushie makers plushie artists or so, uh, soft sculptors as they're also called why I admire them so much is because they remind me of my grandmother and her keen eye of of sewing and what have you and then my f grandfather did it for recreation so he did it you know he drew all different types of stuff stuff from reality and such and then my father was heavily into it got it from you know my father got it from my grandparents and he just did all different types of stuff he was into comics he was into like um old school albums like funkadelic p funk funkadelic and like Prince or the formerly <laughs> artist known as Prince and Michael Jackson. And like back in the day, they had some like really wild album covers. So he would draw stuff like that. And I have a lot of good memories of drawing with my father or doing art projects, especially when I was little, you know, I would ask my dad, 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 could you, you know, could you, um, you know, could you, could you do this project with me and stuff like that? And, you know, he would get really into it and I would be amazed and it, it was just fun. It was just fun. So a lot of the happy memories, a lot of the bases and per sense of purpose, the inspirational purpose that I have with my artwork, I guess you can call it that, my inspirational purpose that I have with my artwork was, is based around that, based around all those memories. Now, the the inspiration of continuing and wanting to grow as an artist and be successful with making my own anime studio or completing a manga project mainly came from a, a, a painful situation that I saw my father go through with his art career. Uh, originally, he wanted to do architecture and he loved artwork. And unfortunately, the story that I've heard um, back in the day, you know, back in the day when it comes to before the Internet, you guys probably don't know anything about this. I well, I won't say hardly know, but I lived in an era that straddled both. I lived in a, a time period where there was no Internet. And then I now live in a you know, I live in a time period where there was Internet. So. I know the excuse me, the experience of both, but mainly when my father, when he expressed his art and he had a wonderful art album, uh, unfortunately, 
things got a little complicated and it was due to trusting in 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 uh the wrong individuals or the wrong people the portfolio his artwork was unfortunately stolen now in in the internet world nowadays it's a little bit e- it's simultaneously both easier and difficult at the same time because especially if you have a huge fan base and a lot of support and you i notice this person's art style in a matter of seconds you can always report to the artist or make sure the artist gets the notification and if they're doing caught doing something that they shouldn't be doing you know you you get the backing you got the support and all that other stuff but back then that wasn't the case and that really hurt um my father's artistic spirit and when he told me that story or you know when he told me that i became driven i became driven i wanted to be successful for both of us that he really because of somebody else's negativity and and sort of like their own particular sense of greed they hurt and and injured this artistic soul this artistic vision and you know unfortunately that was something that hurt my father you know a lot and it's one of those things that you know um it it's one of those things that happen but there's a silver lining to it that it also encouraged me to basically do my own thing to make sure i'm successful not only just for my sake but for his sake because of the fact that he didn't get that chance somebody unfortunately took that from him so you know uh i mean there are other parts of the situation all other parts of the story too but that really hurt him so um but you know at first i wanted to be like hey i wanted to be the person that would be successful for both of us and i still feel that way to a certain extent but i also learned that it can't be just solely motivated by a person's other dream you also have to be motivated to doing it on your own being your own your own person in that regard and what you truly really want in life and i had to make that you know make that decision later on down the road do i really do the do i really want this do i really want to do i really want to continue making anime or going in an animation type of direction manga based direction is it because of the fact that hey i'm doing it because of somebody else's unfortunate pain but am i doing it for myself and i had to really think about that for a time that hey am i doing this for somebody else or i'm doing this all for myself and it was a very tough decision to make and i decided that i wanted to do this for myself i mean now the fires of sort of like vengeance and rightful justice kind of not dissipated but it's not as a it's not a roaring flame it's not like anything front and center it's more of in the background oh if i achieve this success that will come along with it but it's not like the center stage of why i'm doing this i really enjoy what i do i really do love my artwork i love i love what i do i love making you guys happy i i love how i could inspire people and people just get a chance to enjoy life cuz i know it's it's difficult it's you know every day is a challenge and you don't know what tomorrow might bring sometimes you might get a break sometimes you don't sometimes it feels like your breaks you don't get a break so i like being a positive source that hey if i could make somebody smile out there like maybe one or two people and make their day a little bit more brighter than i rather do that for the most part So that's more of a historical where the baseline inspiration came from. Those wonderful memories with my family, how sort of like a history of the artistic skill came about, and also the sort of like the iron will, the more of the dark inspiration where that came from. You know, not unfortunately not all bits of inspiration can be happy. Sometimes it can come from a very dark and painful place. But on the most 
know, the inspiration that I do usually get, the majority of my inspiration does come from mythology, old stories that I used to uh, read when I was little. My mother would read me uh, fairy tales, grim fairy tales, when I was little to put me to bed. And, but my father read uh, me comic books, mainly Thor, because Thor is technically his favorite. Um, <laughs> but no, he would read me like Spider-Man and, and, and Thor and Iron Man and X-Men and all those old old time comics back in the day not the not the 90 ones the 90s it, I, it was inspiration to me because i used to grow up and watch that that was saturday morning cartoons you know i i, I love those so that's a part of my repertoire my little i would say library of inspiration those golden times of basically saturday night or sorry not saturday night actually it's saturday night too but i'll get to that in a moment saturday mornings having a bowl of cereal or waking up at six o'clock a.m and watching like cartoons until noon and then falling asleep. The times where my cousins would come over and they would play with their action figures or they br bring their video games over and get in I would get inspiration or that memory inspired me like basically Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter, uh, the old Disney Sega Genesis games, you know, all those times, those fall under the bracket of inspiration. When it comes to mythology, my father um, used to watch, my parents and I would watch Hercules and Xena, Warrior Princess. And then also on top of that, my father also gave me a book of like North mythology and Greek mythology. Uh, later on, as I got older, I would spend a large and alarming time in the library and I would look up different mythologies such as like Arabic mythologies and Chinese and Japanese and African and all these other mythologies. It, it was like a golden black book from what I remember. It was like, it was this thick novel, novel size book that I would just read of all the various different ad, um, uh, pathions that existed, which I thought that was really cool. And I got some, a lot of inspiration from that. Also Egyptian and I can go on and on about anime. Anime, whew, that is a huge plethora of inspiration that I got when I was little because it has a lot of positive attachment to it. Not just only the fact that, hey, uh, obvious, oh, Toonami was like the greatest show on earth at the time. And, you know, you would have that, you would come home from school at 3 o'clock p.m. and you would rush home to watch Toonami. No, no, no. It wasn't just that. I used to watch Dragon Ball Z with my father. And I used to watch Sailor Moon with my mom. So there are times where I would rush home and I would tape the episodes with my v VHS. Some of you don't know what a VHS is. But back in the day, it was like this big old clunky case with tape in it like tape film had tape it had film in it and you would put it in and just like record the episode for that day and so i could watch it at any given time even though i didn't know the uh other inclinations of uh you know how 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 illegal that is but whatever you do please don't sue me but no um i used to do that Especially the time in grade school, which I really hated. A lot of o otakus, those of the nerd and geek community can understand this, that grade school was tough, especially trying to fit in. It wasn't good. It, it wasn't good. And we got teased and bullied. So there was no sense of uh, place for us at the time. I mean, nowadays, it's a little bit... It's a lot better because you have like all these different uh, subgroups in, in anime cu culture and it's gotten so huge that it's it's become mainstream. So there is always some kind of place for otakus. But like those who are like heavily, heavily into otakudom like I am, still it's really hard to find a place, especially in grade school back then. So watching anime was a solace, uh, my sense of sanctuary and and such. So all those memories, such as watching Sailor Moon with my mom, watching Dragon Ball Z with my dad, and then drawing with my cousins because they were inspired. They drew too. They, they were inspired by Dragon Ball Z and X-Men. My cousins were really good at emulating the Dragon Ball Z style, even though, oh my God, nowadays the arms are so bloody short. It really bothered me. But um, that's besides the point. 
the fact that with an amalgamation of all those experiences, such as watching, you know, Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z and Inuyasha and Yu Yu Hakusho and Gundam Wing, Roni Kenshin, Pokemon, Digimon, the list goes on, if anything. Watching all those shows, Yu-Gi-Oh, all of them, it really inspired me to draw and sort of like all my artwork especially because it stays in the old school way of anime it's sort of like an ongoing love letter to that era and bringing it into the more modern day of anime because i mean there's to a certain extent a lot of certain characters look exactly the same and i was always kind of bothered by it Uh, my mother when she first watched Dragon Ball Z, she always said, oh, the characters look exactly the same. I can't tell who's who. So it's like I was inspired by it and I wanted to add something new to the anime anime community. I wanted to add something new to the anime style. I just wanted to add and contribute to, to anime history as a whole or the anime genre as a whole because of the much needed joy and life and inspiration you know i know there's like i know that this might sound cheesy actually there's i think there's a documentary on crunchyroll uh regarding situations like this how anime basically saved people's lives and i have to say um for me especially for that age yeah anime saved my life in that regard because i really had no place to go uh, not that I didn't have, I didn't come from a loving family, quite the opposite. I came from an extremely loving family. But at the same time, there's still certain things that as a kid, you're basically dealing by yourself, especially with your emotional changes and your, your mental changes throughout your time of your growth there. A sense of belonging, if you would, finding friends. I was always adamant of making friends, and still to this very day, I'm adamant of making friends. I I like being around people. I like making friends. I like hearing their stories and their experiences and how we relate as well as somewhat being a lot, a little bit or a lot different. So yeah, those are pretty much the plethora of inspiration that I got from memories, some from memories attachment bonds of people throughout my family, mythology. Uh, I can go into grand detail about that. If you guys want to hear something isolated, specifically how did anime in all its wonderful glory really affect you? Or how did not safe for work stuff really, you know, emulate it? And why did you go in that route with your drawings? You know, something if you guys want, because this is sort of like a generalized conversational piece. I thought it was, a little bit more easier to grasp because of the fact that this is sort of like an introduction to something entirely different. But if you want something a little bit more concentrated, more focused in that regard of like inspiration, anime edition, inspiration, mythology edition, I can tell you, um, or inspiration, not safe for work edition. I am all for that. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts. This is pretty much, um, more more or less the basis of all my inspiration where it comes from where it stems from all the connections and bonds that I have with had with it but if you guys want something concentrated more focused I'm all ears if you would like I would like to hear your comment I would like to see your comments at the bottom of this video and and want to hear what you guys think and Here's also a question. What inspires you? Because I know there's a couple of artists in 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 the community that we're building. And I put this question to you. What where what inspires you? What got you into creating in the first place? Was it something to keep your mind off the dark days? Or was it something that you thought was interesting and you wanted to learn and you never turned back? So, you know, I would like to hear I would like to hear from you guys. I would like to see. Maybe our response video was also is also an option as well. But if you guys have any comments, I would like to see them at the bottom. So I want to say thank you guys for indulging in this con- this little conversation. If you guys like it, please leave a like, a comment, and please subscribe if you guys want to see more of stuff like this. Speed paints, reaction videos, conversational pieces, anything of that nature, um, I'm all for. Also, if you guys want to see some really cool stuff, Um, I know this week is going to be a little bit rough because I will be out of town. So that's also one of the reasons why a lot of this stuff is kind of slow. So, but if you guys want to see some really cool stuff and want to be the first 
people to see it before it gets exposed to the masses, um, check out my Patreon. We got some really cool stuff, including uh, the big project that I'm working on, which is my manga. I have a couple of sketches up there of the recent. I just recently got through making my very first page. It's kind of it's very exciting, but um. Yeah, so please excuse for all the all the markings and mishaps on the sketch. It's like kind of kind of crazy, but you guys know what sketch can sketches can be all over the place. But yeah, so thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your support, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.